Hi, Taurus. Welcome. So, Taurus, this is going to be your reading. I'm going to start with the general spiritual messages. Whoop. Then I'm going to go into the love, you versus them reading. And I'm time stamping this January because that's when I'm recording it. But I just trust that whenever this finds you, that's when it's actually for you. My readings are actually timeless. So, let's get into it, Taurus, and see. I want to say that I feel a lift in the energy compared to what I have been feeling while I was doing the other Zodiac signs readings. Um, the energy for January has been a bit tumultuous up and down. So I was really happy to feel a lift for you, Taurus. Um, hopefully you're feeling that as well as we go into the weekend and um, as we enter February, right? So you have the card of opposition and balance, which is one of my favorite energies. This is about finding balance, finding peace. It also talks about um, um, being disciplined, okay? Uh, how you relate to others. Sometimes this talks about mirroring in relationships as well. Um, on a more, uh, I hate the word negative, on the other side of that, it could talk about conflicts. It could talk about um, feeling tested or called out. So be careful with that energy. Um, so let's see what else we have coming through. And I don't know if this is all, if this is related to you, but before I started the reading, I had the song, She's a Rich Girl and I Don't Know Anyway. It's an old song. And she can rely on an old man's money. <laughs> it's a bitch girl Do you guys know what song I'm talking about? <laughs> it's a goodie It's a goodie but it's an oldie um, So I don't know if that relates to you at all Taurus um, And or that you may actually randomly hear that song It's just confirmation maybe that this reading's for you But I have to bring it up because the first card I got out Do you see this person? It's somebody who is holding tightly to their riches. It's a rich girl. <laughs> but actually, this card is talking about the miser, which is kind of this closed off, not very giving, not very open, sometimes stingy type of energy. So this could be relating to you or it could be relating to a situation or a person that you're dealing with. Uh, take it as it resonates. You also have the card of control. So I get a sense here, Taurus, that there is this closed off energy and it's purposeful in that it's allowing you a sense of control, right? A lot of times when people hoard things or they're not very open and giving, it is sometimes a form of control, right? Um, or making someone feel more in control. So that's just something to take note of, whether that's you or somebody you're connecting with. Um, but let's see what else. And then the encouragement is to go with the flow. And the first thing I got the other message I got as well, Taurus, is like this not letting go type of not giving up type of mentality here. Um, and spirit is not asking and is never asking anyone to give up on their goals or their desires or the things that fulfill them. The universe is never asking that of you either. But it is saying give up the resistance around it, the need to worry, the need to stress, uh, the need to you know, beat it up in your mind, you know, that's what you're needing to let go of. So some of you have been really holding tightly to your guns about something or really holding tightly to um, your opinion about something even. And that's fine to hold on to that if it's important to you, but let go of the need to push against the situation or a person to even need to be understood, okay? This is more a situation that is about understanding yourself and going with the flow and letting life kind of figure out your path of least resistance for you. So let's go deeper and see what this is all about, Taurus, and go a bit deeper. So overall energy is towards Wow, your cards are popping. Seven of Wands, Page of Swords. 
Knight of Wands. It's not my favorite combination. So this card is like being, being very guarded, having your wall up. It's a very protective energy. And this is occurring because there is something you don't trust, okay, about a situation or a person. It's a very analytical type of energy, but it's also very skeptical energy. So if there has, if you're being presented with something that you feel very skeptical about, I feel like it will serve you almost to kind of take a step back to try and see the bigger picture before you react, before you go into action, before you jump to conclusions. Because there is this impulsive energy here, Taurus, that may feel like, you know, like it's your duty to do something or it's your call to action. But until you kind of feel this situation out a little bit more, I feel like it was, it blunder is the word they want me to say. It will be a blunder, um, meaning like not going to necessarily get out of that situation what you hoped for. Okay, so again, they're saying it's more so about going with the flow than trying this more controlling type of energy, okay? Um, which it's easy to go into this energy when we're fearful or I heard avoidance. Some of you have a, a fearful avoidant attachment. Style, and that's like a personality style or something. I don't know. Take it or leave it. <laughs> but what I was going to say is that sometimes when we fear, whatever that fear is, whether it's loss, I feel for you, some of you, it is loss. But um, whenever we go into that state of fear, it's easy for our egos to overcompensate, overreact. Um, look for the negative, worry, um, get into the space where we become defensive, untrusting, um, skeptical, um, impulsive. So be careful with that. You want to maintain your balance. You want to maintain your cool. You want to go with the flow. And that's the guidance here. And if you're dealing with someone who has these control issues or that is trying to control something, just keep in mind that nobody has the ability or power to control your mind. And your mind is everything because your mind is what creates your reality. And although people can impose what seems like physical restrictions on us, nobody can restrict one's mind, okay? That's where your free will comes in. So you always have the ability to turn a situation around, to see a different perspective, and to, if you will, focus your mind in a way that allows an outer manifestation to happen. So, what an interesting reading. Let's keep going. This is making sense. All right, in the emotional space, Space, strength, the knight of swords, and the four of wands. So, yeah, I feel there's this energy here. I feel like there's a strong desire here to be heard. Okay, whether that's by you or somebody you're connecting with. Um, hold on a second. Especially if you're feeling pushed around. Don't buck up against a Taurus. <laughs> you mess with the bull, you get the horns, okay? <laughs> um, but yes, you know, that's kind of what I feel like. If somebody or something is bucking up against you, it makes you almost want to push harder. And this is a natural response of our ego because our ego serves to protect us. 
not a bad thing. But the only way to truly get something accomplished that is in alignment with your higher self is to see this from a higher perspective than the ego. The ego wants to push against. Spirit wants to accept, wants to allow. Allow others to do as they wish. Allow ourselves to feel how we want and pushes against nothing. But since we live on the earthly plane with a bunch of other egos, not so easy to do. Not so easy to do. But you might be facing a situation where it's calling you to go a bit deeper, to push further, push yourself more towards your spirit than your ego and to try something different in your approach to these types of situations. So let's see what else. Now on a positive note here, there is, um, you're showing up quite confident, quite strong. Um, there is an, an opportunity here also to connect with friends or family, somebody very close to you. So I see like a sense of support or camaraderie showing up for you. Um, let's see what else. I can still hear that song. But I gotta be strong. Oh, rich girl. And no, no matter anyway. You can lie on your old man's money. Oh, why? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, Nine of Cups, Nine of Pentacles, Nine of Pentacles. So, there is two cards of impulse here. So, again, do not impulsively communicate. Do not impulsively share information or jump to conclusions during this time frame. All right. Some of you have, like, a suspicion here. All right. But until you get more clarity around that, they're, they're saying to kind of back away from that energy, to kind of stop yourself from moving in that direction. Um, there is emotional satisfaction coming in, though, in the form of, I feel, emotional support from your loved ones or a specific loved one. Um, and that kind of makes you pause as well. Like, okay, you know, sometimes our loved ones are so needed in our lives, right? Um, sometimes we're very independent and we feel we can do everything on our own and that's good. It's good to develop a healthy relationship with yourself, but also sometimes it is nice to have those people that can help us change direction, who can help us see something that we're not seeing. And I feel that showing up for you in the form of friendship in particular, but it could be through partnership or family, uh, even coworkers. So keep an open mind here. Um, but I definitely see that coming through. I think there's also a question you need to ask yourself is like, I want to feel good about myself at the end of the day, right? And what I do and say matters and how I react matters. How other people choose to respond and react, not my problem, not my responsibility, but how I respond and react is 100% my responsibility because how I respond and react is what makes up my vibration and my vibration is what's calling forth everything to me. So if I want to keep a pure vibration because I want to be able to attract the best outcome, then I got to hold myself to that gold standard. I got to hold myself to that high standard. And although it seems like I'm doing that for the other person, I'm actually doing that for myself. You know, because a lot of people will say, how come I got to take the high road when they're going low? And it's like, because they know not what they do and they're going to become a match to that low level energy. And I promise you, law of attraction is going to bring them something they really don't like. By you taking the high road, you're not just giving that person the gift of being the bigger person, but you're ultimately giving yourself 
the most important gift, which is that your attraction point is going to stay high and therefore you're going to attract the best outcome out of the situation. You see, very simple when you break it down. Um, but sometimes the ego gets it confused. Sometimes the ego wants to meet people where they're at, buck up against them, be just like them. You really get nowhere with that, Taurus, and you're never going to get anywhere with that. And if you've lived enough life, you already know that. So, wow, <laughs> what this reading just took way off. I'm bare, you know, yes, wow, goodness. Let's get some guidance and we're going to go to the love reading. I see my dog has made an appearance. Mr. Docky Doodle. I don't know if you guys can see him back there. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Hi, Smokies. Hi, Monkey. I don't know why I call him Monkey. His name is Doc. After Doc Hollywood. Um, but for some reason, I just don't even look like a monkey. I've just always called him Monkey. <laughs> Weird, right? Anyways, <laughs> here's your guidance. It says, our diversity supports our individual freedoms. While your societies continue to try to dictate and enforce human behavior to please the majority, because of your diversity, it continues to be an uncomfortable, ongoing struggle that again and again falls of its economic weight. There simply is not enough money in the world to buck the natural current of freedom an independent thought. It brought up money. That's why I keep singing that rich girl song. So some of you think money is what rules the world. It's independent thought that rules the world and nobody controls your thoughts but you. Wow. Super interesting. I can't wait to see what the love reading has to say. I'll see you in just a second. Welcome back. All right, Taurus, now we're going to go into the you versus them love reading. I'm going to go back and forth between you and the person you may be connecting with. Um, and keep in mind, it's a general. Don't make it resonate. If it's not your reading, it's not. All right. But um, the roles also can be reversed. It's usually going to be about an intimate partner. But doesn't have to be. Keep an open mind. Could be about a family member, a friend, you name it. So you have the card of we are connected. Sorry, hold on. Doc. No. No, sir. Sorry. He was chewing on a co uh, a power cord. <laughs> Do you want him to get hurt? Okay. <clears throat> you have the card of we are the world and this person has the card of compromise. So this is talking about connectivity, completions, um, the collective, how you're connected to all and all that is. This person has the card of compromise, which is about kind of getting along, exactly what it sounds like, giving and receiving equally, um, coming to compromises. So let's get into it and see, Taurus, what we have going on. I'm going to look at the recent past, um, how you both see each other in the now, how you both feel underneath it all, and most likely you help them. Whew, all of a sudden I'm sweating over here. Recent past for Taurus, Page of Pentacles, when it comes to this connection. Okay. Uh, I got... I heard I give, I give, I give. So some of you have given quite a bit of yourself to the connection or have overgiven to something um, and maybe don't feel like you you receive, right, what you're giving. Um, and this is in the past. So this could have been a pattern you had in past relationships. It could have been a pattern you had with this person. Take it as it resonates. But you have two pages here and then the queen of swords in the middle. So I feel like there was a lot of potentials here um, for you to look at in the past, um, but these cards often talk to about like an underdevelopment or immature energy. So there might have been some immaturity involved. You may have still let yourself say or do things you didn't mean in the past or, you know, there was an opportunity for growth and development, I feel, on both ends. But... Um, it's it's 
all in the wash now. I don't even know if that's actually a saying. Hold on, let me make sure I get that right. Yeah, um, the message that I'm getting is like, I don't wanna say like who cares, but it's like the past is the past for a reason. Definitely things could have been handled differently or handled, handled better, but why do you wanna carry that you know, detrimental thought now because you can't change the past, right? And so spirit is very now focused. I almost said future focused, but not really. Spirit is now focused in the forever now because you're only ever living in the now, okay? And the faster you can wrap your mind around that, the faster you can connect yourself to your higher self. But I just get like there is some like some immature behavior that somebody regrets or impulsive behavior that somebody regrets. Okay, five of wands, nine of cups or something that could have been handled better. Let me just say that could have been handled better. And I also heard could have been handled with kid gloves, kid gloves. This person has the five of wands, nine of cups, six of cups. So. There's definitely some strife and tension showing up in this person's energy. Um, they also have been fixated on the past and in, in a multitude of ways, thinking about past successes as well, things that they've overcome. Um, I actually feel like a more of a nostalgic vibe than like a fixated toxic energy. Um, I think this person just... They just like to go there. Like, remember when we overcame that? Remember when this? They're giving me that song, remember when? They live in the past a lot, or they reminisce about the past. That's a country song. I have no clue who sings it. It's a beautiful song, though. Okay. Let's go into how you see each other in the now. <laughs> For Taurus, how do you see this person in the now energy? Miss Fire in the now. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> Queen of Cups, Judgment. So there definitely seems to be a struggle here. Some of you are struggling like emotionally with how to feel about something, you know, um, maybe a decision that you need to make. When it comes to this person, it feels like a back and forth with them. Um, there's definitely a strain here or maybe a strain has been placed on the relationship. Some of you feel judged, you know, or judgment or judgmental towards this person, right? Depends on what that you've been through with them. Um, but I actually feel that you both feel this way. So let's see. You have the sun card. They have the sun card. The star card and the empress. So I feel like, yes, Taurus, um, this person, they actually see you in a positive light. So it's interesting to me that you're struggling because it's like this person is more like thinking about the good times or the nostalgia, uh, the good parts of you or the good parts of the connection. There's happiness, there's hopefulness, there is this desire to be patient, to be careful. That's interesting. Um, caring, you know, and this could be how they see you. They could see you as a source of hope and light and love and caring. The Empress does represent Taurus energy in me. Um, 
So maybe whatever it is that you're struggling with has nothing to do with this person. For some of you, it doesn't, and they're just trying to be here for you. For others of you, it's just that, you know, maybe this person sees you in a beautiful, loving light, but right now you're struggling, you know, for whatever reason to see them the same way. So pick which group you're in. Let's go further into the emotional space. How do you feel underneath it all? Page eleven. Nine of Pentacles. Knight of Cups. Three of Wands. I have to say that some of you are on your way to financial freedom, even if it doesn't really feel like that, because I can hear it, and there is a bunch of um, messages about that in the spiritual reading, um, which is funny because the miser, which is actually somebody who's holding tightly or needing to save up and not being very generous, was in that reading, and it's like the key to to getting what you to getting financial freedom is to be generous to feel abundant I don't know how that's related to love it may or may not be related at all but I I need to say that um so as it pertains to this person I feel a lot of deep emotion here, um, and there's regret. I don't know if it's coming from your end or their end, but there's this hesitancy here, like in expressing this emotion or um, I have the song Ophelia in my head. Oh, Ophelia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, some of you had to come to your own conclusion about this person before you really, you know, share what you're feeling or open up. Um, I feel in your heart of hearts, you definitely want to share that and be vulnerable and you know, and that in a way is an opening for you. Um, there's a lot of future forward thinking going on here. But see, it's you're also thinking about yourself too. It's not just about this person. It's bigger than that. It's more than that. It's deeper than that. It's also about you and what you want and where you see your life going. Let's see, this person's Cause honey, I love you. That's all she wrote. Oh, oh, feel me now. Mm -hmm. How does this person feel? They're trying to get control of their emotions, or stay in control of their emotions. They definitely don't want you to see them suffer, or see them worry, or see them cry, even. Um, they, it's like a very stoic outward appearance. It's like, yeah, I've got this under control. I know what I'm doing. I know my worth. But they're, they are emotionally drained. And it, sometimes their shadow is um, pulling at them, particularly when they're alone. I think that they're trying to work through this. They're trying to process through something, but they're trying to do it on their own. So, let's see where this is headed. This is a very deep reading. Let's see where this is headed. The Lovers, the Six of Pentacles. Oh my God, I gotta look up the lyrics. I have no clue what that song is about. So I feel like you want to clear up some confusion here. There is this, see you showed up as the Queen of Swords in the past and you're showing up as the King of Swords. Now certainly you could be dealing with an air sign, don't get me wrong, but this is showing up in your energy. So I feel this is what you're bringing to the table. 
And it's like, yeah, you know what? When you're feeling connected, when you're feeling like your best self, you are the most open, generous, kind, loving people on this planet. Taurus low-key be one of my favorite zodiac signs. I don't have a favorite, but if I had a favorite, no. But you mess with the bowl, you get the horns. This is a very not effing around energy. It's like, let me cut through the bullshit. Let me clear this up for you. Let me correct any misunderstandings you may have about me. Stern. And maybe this serves you. I don't know. I don't know your situation, but that's what's showing up here. It's like, it's two very different sides to you that is showing up here. So I feel like if you feel that you're going to get the same reciprocity or, you know, that the connection is mutual, they get that softer side. And if you feel that there's confusion or illusions or, you know, something's not adding up, you know, you bring out this harsher side and it's dependent, I feel, on how this person presents themselves. So let's see, how are they presenting themselves to you in the future? Not the best, Seven of Swords. Well, the truth is always going to come out, okay? It'll all come out in the wash. That's what it was. And let's give me anxiety here. Hold on a second. <laughs> so there's something being hidden, being revealed. And it's by happenstance. But I feel like it's actually coming from this person because what I'm hearing is all bullshit aside. Excuse my language, guys, but whatever. Like, that's what I'm feeling. Like, I feel like this person wants to put all bullshit aside and approach in a loving way. Um, but, you know, some things just cannot be resolved. You know, I feel like there's something unresolved here as well um, that they are needing to move away from but really haven't yet this is what they're working on internally that they don't show the world or you and until they can resolve that this cannot fully transform in the way that they want But they are trying. And if you recall, their overall energy was that of compromise. So it's really up to them on how they want to approach. And I feel like based on how they approach will be energetically how you return the approach. <laughs> how you react but isn't that funny because in the spiritual reading I was saying you know how other people behave or react to you is theirs to own and how you choose to react and behave is on you and so maybe go back and watch the spiritual reading so that you can help guide yourself to feel out which is the right direction to go So let's see what the guidance is for my Taurus. My thoughts join a powerful swirling vortex of attraction. In the same way that the law of attraction is responding to your thoughts, words, and actions that you're offering here in the physical reality, the law of attraction is also responding powerfully to your vibrational reality. When the law of attraction, the universal manager of all, responds to the clarity of vibration offered by your expanding inner being, the result is a powerful, swirling vortex of attraction. Wow. 
really interesting guidance there for you, Taurus, but also solid guidance on the spiritual part of the reading. Definitely rewind, take a look at that last part. Otherwise, I'm going to leave you there. Oh, look, you have another one. Sorry, one more. I can look for things I appreciate in my relationship. You cannot get the relationship of your dreams when your chronic thoughts about relationships feel lonely, angry, worried, or disappointed. But as you look for things you appreciate in yourself and others and make lists of positive aspects, you will train your vibrational offering to match the vibration of your desires and your perfect mate will then become. Okay, also solid advice. <laughs> Um, zodiac signs that you may be connecting with or have in your own chart. We're going to leave it there for now. I have Capricorn, Aries, Gemini, oops, that's the wrong deck, Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, um, Pisces, Libra. Those are the predominant signs I'm seeing, but keep in mind it is a general, so take what resonates, leave what doesn't. If it did resonate, do let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget to give me a like, share, and subscribe. If you haven't yet, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram for more fun stuff. I do have videos and content over there. Um, otherwise, thank you so much for joining me. I'm wishing you the very, very best. And until next time, my friends, namaste.